a nerve stretch, okay? So this is similar to slump, okay? It doesn't have a full name to it, but it's just a nerve tension stretch, okay? And you'll find out it's similar to thoracic outlet because all of your nerves originate there, but it gives you a little bit more knowledge of where they go, okay? So if you're looking for your radial nerve, basically you want to position the person palm down, rotated internally, and coming back, okay? When you're looking to do, you can close the fist to even really extend it, and if you want to be a mean person, you can really stretch it. Because remember, it's just like slump test where you're trying to take from the head to the distal and tension it as much as possible to see if there's an issue, okay? Then if you want to do median nerve, you want to stretch everything out and almost do a server motion. So everything's stretched, everything is stretched. Okay? Super fun. Are you having any issues? Okay, I'm sorry. <laughs> then the next one is for your ulnar nerve. Close it up, bring it up, pull it back. Okay? That's a really basic test while they're seated and you can really co-op it with a lot of your other tests. So when I look at doing tests for shoulders, I worked a lot of wrestling. In wrestling, you have a very limited amount of time um, to do an eval, especially upper, because they usually have shoulder issues. And so you can build this one in seated very quickly into your manual muscle test to see if there's a nerve or an issue, okay? If you wanna do it more the professional way, you can lay back down. When you do all those, you're just looking for like pain? Burning, shooting, pain, numbness, tingling. All of your traditional nerve tests. And remember, it's the same as slump. So you're taking it from the top of the head to the, the appendage and you're stretching it. Okay? So if I wanted to do this a little bit more scientifically, I could, where I have this person to tingle your shoulder off this. So I could bring them onto the table, stabilize at the top, rotate the hand, and drop them down. I can stabilize on the arm, stabilize at the shoulder, bring them out, bring them out, and extend them. Or I can stabilize, extend, and bring it up to the head. Okay? This one gives you a lot more stability, but again, if you're doing a field test, you might not have the luxury of a table. So being able to do it standing also helps. Okay? Or seated. Are we okay with those or do you want to practice those before we move on to the other ones? Okay, good. No one said anything, so we're moving on. Sit up. Okay, so this is the dumbest test, but it's on the thing, so you're gonna learn it. It's called the ruse test, and it sucks. <laughs> so basically, you have your hands up here, and you have the hands up, and then for three minutes, they do this. That's it, that's all you do for three <laughs> minutes. What does that test? It um, tests mm -hmm. nerves, it tests blood flow. Really, it never is really positive. It has really bad specificity and it's just not great. And you get usually tired from it before you have any issues. But then once you're done, then you do an artery. You look at the radial artery and see if there's compromised blood flow to the area. I don't recommend ever using it in clinic, but you need to know it um, for the sheer joy of knowing it because the BOC tests on it. Okay, so you do want to just sit there for three minutes. I don't recommend you actually do it in class. Do it later. And then just test the radial pulse and just see if there's compromised blood flow between the arms. That's what you're looking for. Okay. Um, Allen's is very similar, but it's just down low and it's for a minute. So usually they just go here and you feel radial pulse as they go through there. Okay. Military brace test, or I think it's called Eden's test also, so I don't know how Chelsea's is gonna label it. Again, you're looking radial pulse. You bring them back here, 
and you hang out for like 30 seconds to a minute and you see if they have diminished radial proximal between the arms. Okay? Um, military brace test or Eaton's is actually a pretty decent test if you have somebody that has a compromised blood flow. Um, I've had one positive where we've had a kid that has um, in his like throwing arm, he had a baseball player, he had a compromised circulatory system because um, of I think an extra rib, but yeah, he had issues with this one. And then Addison's, is, ooh, I forgot it. So let's practice those. And knock out both manual muscle testing, and if you get a good pattern, you're nervous, you're nerves, okay? With myotomes and dermatomes. So if you think about what you got here, you're not usually gonna do these first cervicals. If you have issues with these first cervicals, you probably have other issues like fracture that is bad. So knowing that your C1, C2 is front of face and um, C3 is lateral face and skull, those two are more important for like cervical fracture stuff, okay? And again, like if you have somebody that you're evaling in an emergent situation and you stroke the side of their face or you like look at their eyelashes and see if you stroke like near their eyeballs to see if they flinch away, that tells you A, I can put in an OPA or an oral adjunct for their breathing, or it tells you that we really don't have, you know, dermatomes if they're conscious in that area, okay? And that will tell us that that's bad and we need to spine work, right? Um, for the testing of everything else, these two are usually not gonna have issues. What you're gonna see the issues is down the chain because once we start getting into those other cervicals, that's when we start really dealing with a lot of our rotational issues and our nerve entrapment and our facet dysfunction, okay? So being good at four through T1 is important. So again, you have superior shoulder. So if you're looking right there, and again, you'll also line up with some of your cervical nerve or your cranial nerves once you start getting into some of these two. So normal lateral of the humerus is kind of your next one. Um, then for the lateral forearm and hand and just kind of feeling everything, making sure dermatomes are normal. Okay, just know where your patterns are. Then when you start muscle testing and or doing your special tests, this is a really good quick field test and what you should practice if you ever work like wrestling. Because most of your manual muscle tests will also work with your nerve roots right here. Okay, so. Always I start with shoulder shrug, hold, hold, hold. So now we're doing rotator cuff, hold, rotator cuff, hold, rotator cuff, flip, hold, good, elbows bent, don't want to push you in, rotator cuff, hold, hold, rotator cuff. Now we're going back to nerve, hold, back to nerve, push me down, good. Flex up, no, hands closed. Hold, we're back to nerve and forearms. Bring them down, hold, good. Fingers out, nerve. <laughs> really easy, right? So we basically hit everything. We can get more into scap if we wanted to special test or we can get more into deltoid. So let's say they have a really bad problem, stay there, with this guy and hold. You wanna know if it's more anterior or posterior delt. All you gotta do is change positioning. Make sure they don't fall over, hold. This is testing posterior, hold, anterior. If they're struggling with more scap dynamics and this is hard for them, rotate their hand out, hold, 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 hold. Okay, and that will change how you work in your scap dynamics, specifically your um, rhomboid major, rhomboid minor, and then some of your track, okay? So practice a really easy one. I'll walk through it with your first one, and then just keep practicing adding in certain parts. 